several occasions saying that my primary goal as county commissioner is to move Beaver County forward. Beaver County has a rich history in, of being pioneers of moving forward. Beaver County was the first county in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania to install electronic voting machines. The first county to consolidate all its outside agencies under one human services building. And we are the first to build a state-of-the-art emergency services center. This even caught the eyes of Japanese delegation and officials who recently visited and toured our facility in Ambridge, PA. But most excitingly, Beaver County is poised for revitalization like no other time in recent history. The potential growth in our community and our county is staggering, and all of us see it every day. We have new hotels, new apartments, many new single-family residential plans, new commercial businesses, multiple new medical facilities, and a new Shell petrochemical plant here in Potter Township. The soon to be completed Shell petrochemical plant in Potter is one such opportunity that the county is building off of and must continue to do so. As chairman of the Board of Commissioners, I can speak for all three of us when I say we will support in its development and efforts assist in any way to ensure a smooth transition for Shell and the residents of Beaver County. But we all believe that we need to focus on downstream business development that will produce and play a pivotal role in our county's economic strength. We must foster and support the current growth of future businesses so they continue to be present and able to support the generations of our beloved county. And it's not so distant past Beaver County was home of one of the largest steel mills in the world, feeding the U.S. and the world's industrial giants. As the steel industry went by the wayside, many people lost their jobs in Beaver County. The county's economic condition deteriorated. But united we remain, and we are now seeing a reemergence like never before. That is why it is so important to have a panel discussion like this so we can take advice from such community and industry leaders. I look forward to listening to you all and learning from all your suggestions that you will give us here tonight. I'd like to thank everyone, and God bless the United States, and God bless Beaver County. Uh, let me introduce, if I may, very briefly, uh, just to stand and wave their hands. The two other county commissioners here in Beaver County, I know I saw a commissioner, Tony Amadeo. Tony, where are you? There you are. 
children didn't see a future for employment in this area. Now that story has changed. We're energized with the opportunities that Shell Plan and potential spin-off companies will bring to Beaver County in southwestern Pennsylvania. When Shell first announced its plans to lay a cracker plant here, we all knew it would take a united effort at the state, county, and local levels to ensure this project got off the ground. We spent several nerve-wracking years waiting and watching as proposals suddenly crawled through its opening stages. We all breathed a deep sigh of relief when the Heavy equipment finally moved on site and started moving dirt. Now we're all watching as that work progresses and looking forward to a bright future. Our location in the heart of the Marcellus Shell region was surely a key selling point when Shell was looking for a location for this plant. But I believe there were a number of other factors that enhanced our attractiveness. Western Pennsylvania has always been home to a dedicated workforce. Our coal miners, steel workers, and factory employees played an instrumental role in building this great country. The families left Beaver County after mines, Mills and factories were shut down and returning home now thanks to this new opportunity. They are ready to help us move forward as the Crafter plant is projected spin off industries develop and grow. Another key selling point is Beaver County's proximity to the university, high tech businesses, and first class medical institutions they call Pittsburgh home. I truly believe the entire region will profit from the economic benefits provided by the Crafter plant. This development will spread and promote every economic sector. And so we can all benefit from this major project. One truth I have discovered during my time at Hay State Center is that there are several components to economic growth and business development. They should all mesh together to be successful. One of the key aspects of today's event is it provides a chance for leaders representing many different viewpoints and interests to meet and explore new opportunities and ventures. Presidents today are union leaders, business developers, school and hospital executives, all willing to work together and explore how this once in a lifetime opportunity can benefit us in the region. In closing, I want to thank KDKA and John Delano, Jim County Times, the Feds, and all the sponsors for making this event a reality. I welcome you all to Beaver County, and I look forward to seeing you all here again very soon. Senator Vogel. I'll tell you, I love that guy. I just can't talk as fast as he can. Let me now, it's a great privilege for me to introduce not just one, but a couple congressmen. And I'm going to start with a dear friend, somebody who was a congressman from this area and also a colleague of mine at KDK. If we could get former Congressman Ron Twain. Where are you, Ron? Stand up there. How about a round of applause for Ron Twain? <laughs> this event is bringing out everybody, and we love it. And we're particularly pleased to have our congressman from the 12th Congressional District it still is the 12th Congressional. These numbers I know are crazy, and it's hard to figure out who's what, where, when. But uh, our Congressman from the 12th Congressional District, for some quick words of welcome, Congressman Keith Loftus. Thanks, John. What a great crowd. Uh, uh, it's really good to be here and to see everybody who's here. And John, thank you for all the work putting this together at KDKA. Oh, we're putting an eye on Beaver County. Uh, it, it's great to have that eye on Beaver County because a lot has been happening here. And I'd really like to applaud the spirit that I see in this room. I've enjoyed working with many of you as we work and prepare Beaver County for what's to come. I've often said that Western Pennsylvania built this country in the 19th and 20th centuries, and Beaver County played a big part of that. And the fact is, as this country is rebuilt in the 21st century, Western Pennsylvania and Beaver County are going to play a big part in that as well. The talent and energy that I see in here is really inspiring. Just look around the room. From the field of education, labor, business, everybody ready to work together to make this happen. So welcome. Enjoy the evening. I'm looking forward to how you're going to manage this 11 person panel here. But enjoy the night. Thank you so much. I 
I'm not sure I figured that out yet, Steve. We'll see. It is currently the 12th congressional district, but it will soon be the 17th congressional district. And a resident of the 17th congressional district is Congressman elect Connor Lamb. So we're pleased to recognize Congressman elect Connor Lamb. Come on up. John, for having me here. I have full confidence that John will rule this panel with an iron fist, as uh, he did the debate that we took part in a couple of months ago. Uh, I'm thrilled to be with you tonight. Uh, although we do have some new congressional districts on our hands, uh, which I think give me the unique distinction of being one of the few people to run for Congress in two different districts in the same month. Uh, I'm very excited about that. Uh, I am coming from the 18th congressional district, and I think that gives me the opportunity to talk about how your development here in Beaver County with the Shell Plant really does have real downstream effects in the rest of Western Pennsylvania that you might not always get to see. But during my last campaign, I met several employees of a medium-sized business out in Westmoreland County that is a union shop represented by the United Steelworkers, and they make heavy equipment, some of which is coming down here to be part of the shell plant. And when they transport it from out in Westmoreland County to here in Beaver County, the best way, the cheapest way for them to do that is to float it down the rivers. Uh, so what they need to know in their business is what's the state of the infrastructure out in Jeanette where they're located. They have Canadian businessmen come in and they have two hour long conversations about how hard it is to move a truck in and out of Jeanette. And they need to know if you put heavy equipment on a barge in the river, will the locks and dams be reliable enough to get that down to the shelf plant on time in fulfillment with the contract that they have so that they can keep up their reputation for good work and work that arrives on time. These are public infrastructure questions, and there's a big role for our government to play, I believe, in fixing locks and dams, making them more reliable, uh, in rebuilding our roads and bridges and the things that have declined over time. These are public projects that pay our union men and women a prevailing wage, uh, great wages on which they can uh, feed their families, and which young apprentices can get their first job, just like they are here at the Shell Plant. So I'm going down to Washington, D.C. next week to be sworn in. I'm very excited to begin my service for the people of the 18th District. And I will definitely have my eye on how we can increase the infrastructure business or investment so that our whole region truly does benefit from projects like this and it really can go downstream in a smooth and efficient way. Thank you very much. All right, uh, before we get going, we're not, no more speeches from uh, our political friends, but I do think we may have a couple other uh, state representatives here, so I just want to make sure is uh, State Representative uh, Jim Marshall here? There he is. Thank you. <laughs> State Representative Rob Nancy. <laughs> Do we have any of the other state representatives with us? I don't want to leave anyone out. All right, great. Well, thank you again. Thank you to all our elected officials. Very much appreciate the support for an event like this, but as they pointed out, these are the key people that we want to talk to today with a focus, again, the eye on Beaver County. Uh, Commissioner Camp kind of stole one of my lines. I was going to ask if anybody had a clue what the county's motto was. Any of you remember what he just told us, what Dan told us? <laughs> Divided by rivers, united by its people. And I've had the great opportunity to spend a lot of time in Beaver County over the years. And I think it's, it's true. If there's one thing that unites people in Beaver County, regardless of political party lines, and by the way, for someone who's a political analyst, this is one hell of a confusing county. <laughs> I know it's majority Democrat, but it's just as likely to elect Republicans as Democrats. Democrat Tony Amadeo wins the most votes in the county, but the two Republicans come in second and third, so they control county government, right? I mean, all of that is kind of boggles the mind, but it's wonderful because what it suggests is that the people of Beaver County are more focused on individuals and on public policy and on the positions of the people who they elect to serve them. And I salute Beaver County for that because once again, if, uh, if, there, if there's one thing that I've learned over the years about this county, it's that uh, local leaders and the people of this county 
are united in their love and respect for this county and the desire to make it grow. And so that's what we're going to explore a little bit today. And to do that, we have this outstanding panel of uh, folks. And I, I'm always, uh, you know, when you have 11 people, and you know every one of them is a talker. <laughs> well, almost every one of them. And so we're going to try to limit a little bit of what they say so we have time for questions, both from me and then more importantly, questions from you. I believe you've got pieces of paper on your uh, tables, and feel free to write down a question. We want to allow plenty of time to have these panelists address things that you feel are important about uh, Beaver County. But I alerted the panel that I wanted to start 60 seconds from each, very quick, 60 seconds from each. Tell us about your organization and its importance to the future of Beaver County. 60 seconds. That'll get us started. And why don't we start with Jim? Jim Clintz. Go ahead, Jim, from the operating engineer. Okay, thanks, John. Uh, I'm Jim Clintz, business manager of the International Union of Operating Engin Engineers, Local 66. We are a trade union. Uh, we have 7,400 members, men and women, that operate the heavy construction equipment, the dozers and the cranes, and that construction equipment, plus members that also repair it. Um, I started out as an operator. Actually, I started my career working for about 15 years construction in the Beaver Valley. It's very important to me. Um, I'm also the only person probably in this room that does not get upset when I'm driving through construction and get stopped because of the orange barrels, because the odds are that's one of my members working behind those orange barrels. So I would ask you all to take your time on your way home and uh, reduce your speed in construction zones because it's a dangerous place. Beaver is important to us for a number of reasons. One, there's been considerable construction here for decades. Um, and it's now continuing again with the cracker. But as Beaver County goes, in our opinion, so goes Western Pennsylvania. As Beaver County grows because of the cracker, the downstream opportunities that are gonna come to the region are gonna result in other businesses coming here, whether it's manufacturing, petrochemical, or other things. And at the end of the day, what the operating engineers do, we build things. So we will be part of all of that new development and all of that new construction. So really important to the members of the operating engineers. Thank you, gentlemen, and thank you for keeping it short. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> Valerie McKelvey from the Franklin Center. Valerie. Good evening, everyone. I am so excited to be here. I am humbled that I am with this A team of a panel, first of all. Uh, these are some heavy hitters. I represent the Franklin Center of Beaver County. We are the leading outreach and referral agency in southwestern Pennsylvania. I am part of a small staff that helps clients and helps people. We are, we are about people. And my motto is let the answer always be yes. When someone comes to our door and wants something done, I want it to be yes so that we are, we know that we have helped somebody that we have helped with volunteer services, that we have helped with uh, whatever crisis they're going through. We are 33 years old, we're located at 524 Franklin Avenue, but we do have our fingers in a lot of uh, other counties. Uh, we are really the best kept secret because we are the people that, uh, when people are in need, they call us. Uh, and I am, I am tickled that you all are here and are interested in Beaver County. I was born and raised and bred and bloomed in New Brighton, and I feel a passion for Beaver County. And I'm, I'm glad to see that all of you feel the same way. And I'm a talker, and I'm going to cut it off right there. Thank you, Valerie. Thank you. Here's another talker, Jack Manning from the Beaver County Chamber of Commerce. My wife would tell you, don't put a microphone in front of me. Uh, and I did actually write this out, John, but according to Carter Crowley, I am Jack Manning. I'm president and executive director of the Beaver County Chamber of Commerce and also the uh, Beaver County Partnership for Community and Economic Growth. Uh, the chamber is about 575 members um, from the surrounding uh, 10 counties of the Pittsburgh metropolitan area. We have members uh, from, from all of those areas. 
Our membership is diverse, as diverse as is the Beaver Valley. We have major industry, we have small businesses, entrepreneurs, um, educational institutions, trade unions, uh, nonprofit, faith-based, uh, social services, churches, and, and the like. We're very proud of that. Our board also is a very diverse board that represents that same level of diversity that's in our economy. Uh, the chamber, I think, is very proud to be seen as the preeminent, if I can use that, that term, the uh, preeminent voice for business development and business competitiveness issues in the Valley. And uh, we have multiple committees, government affairs, uh, different economic development uh, folks that work on, on those issues. We also believe at the chamber that you could not have uh, business development without strong community development. Uh, you're only as strong as those communities and our capability to build the vibrancy around that. So that's why we're involved, uh, very proud to be involved with your county partnership and the community development activities that go along with fostering business development in the county. Jack, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Here's the key, as I move closer, their time is up. Right? So, Pat Nardelli, speaking of development, from Castle Hook Development. Go ahead, Pat. Yes, it's up. Uh, uh, Pat Nardelli, uh, as uh, Danny so aptly said, I'm from Cobble, Pennsylvania, and uh, been in the real estate development business for many, many years now, about 40 of them. And uh, we're doing a lot of great things here in Beaver County. We're proud of it, proud to be a member of this panel, quite frankly, with, you know, I've worked with all these guys, Jim Cohen's an operating engineer, Greg Christie from the Iron Workers, Kenny Franca, from the steam fitters, Greg Koroszewski from Carpenters, and John and my Ray from Heritage Valley. And, <clears throat> excuse me, I think that, uh, you know, so so much we've accomplished, we have so much further to go. And I'm just excited about the opportunities to have from Castlebrook and for Deepa County and all the people who are here and all the people in this room. Thank you. 48 seconds. <laughs> from Heritage Valley Health System. Norm? See if I can beat that 48 seconds. <laughs> My name is Norm Mitchery. I've had the privilege of being the President and CEO of Heritage Valley Health System for the past 17 years. I was Chief Financial Officer for six years before that. We are led by a wonderful board of directors that has a vision uh, for the future of healthcare. And I think you all know, uh, if you're from Beaver County, that we are locally owned and independent. Uh, we are not owned and controlled by UPMC, Highmark, or AHN, even though people sometimes like to say that. Uh, our board has a great vision of what we refer to as retail medicine, and that's one of the projects we're working on with Castlebrook. It's a 60,000 square foot facility being built behind the mall. Uh, it will have a uh, seven day a week walking clinic, physician services, imaging services, but it will also have a 22,000 square foot surgery center built right there in the mall, uh, right behind the mall. Uh, the other fact about Heritage Valley that I hope somebody surpasses us someday is that we are not only the largest employer in Beaver County, but we're the largest employer in the airport corridor, absent the 9 11 Air Force Wing. I really hope someday that recognition belongs to industry and not to your healthcare provider. We're here to support the community and we want to continue to be locally owned and independent and bring these services to you in a community setting. Thank you for being here tonight. We greatly appreciate it. Well, thank you very much. And our next panelist, Valerie Pettigo from Huntington Bank. President and District Manager for Huntington Bank and at Huntington looking out for people is what we do. Our founder P.W. Huntington said 150 years ago and it still rings true today that there's a balance between commerce and civil stewardship, community engagement and involvement and what we found is because of the great people of Beaver County that's really easy for us to do. Um, many of my colleagues and I live and work in Beaver County. I'm from Ambridge, Pennsylvania. Um, so we care about the same things that our friends and our neighbors and our customers care about. And so we invest in things like a living wage. We invest in uh, growth opportunities and a welcoming workplace for all. 
We also have services and investment services that empower small businesses to create new jobs and um, for families to really fulfill their dreams and reach their goals. And we also have been investing in the revitalization of the neighborhoods here, which is really, really important to us. So we believe in Beaver County. Um, we, we think that Beaver County is worth it, and we think the rest of the region should follow suit. And I'm really excited to be here today, so I want to thank everyone for coming. Great, thank you. Thank you. Greg Christie from the Ironworkers. Go ahead, Greg. Thank you, John. Good evening, everyone. I am Greg Christie. I am the business manager, financial secretary, treasurer of Ironworkers Local Union Number no. Three. Local Three covers 23 counties in western Pennsylvania, <clears throat> and Local Three's investment in Beaver County is manpower. We have just over 1,400 member active members, many of which are Beaver County residents. And the Shell Cracker plant, which is employs many of them, by this December we will have 625 iron workers there, many of which will be Beaver County residents. We've also just started a $3.8 million addition to our training center in support of the Shell Cracker and also all the other ancillary work that will go along with the Shell Cracker. This is a huge deal for not only Beaver County, the Tri-State area, what this gas industry is doing. And uh, look forward to this evening and your, answering your questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Jennifer Show from the Pennsylvania Cyber School. Um, my name is Jennifer Show. I'm the Deputy Chief Academic Officer at the Pennsylvania Cyber School. Um, PA Cyber is an online cyber charter school that educates approximately 11,000 students in grades K through 12 across the Commonwealth. We are located in Midland in Beaver County and we also have eight uh, regional offices located across the state to help serve our families. Um, we employ about 700 full-time staff members, over half of those residing in the Beaver County area and um, have another 50 part-time staff members. Uh, PA Cyber actually started as a way to educate about 50 students from Midland and over the past 18 years um, we have grown to be one of the largest and most experienced cyber charter schools in the nation. Um, so whether our students are with us for their entire educational journey or whether they are um, simply with us for a short period of time. Our goal is to give them the skills that they need for the future so that they can go out into the community and to um, be productive citizens. Great. Jennifer, thank you very much. <laughs> and Dalton from the Scheme Fitters. Thank you, John. I appreciate being on the panel, and I appreciate being on a panel with the best moderator in Western Pennsylvania. <laughs> That's not going to get you I'm hoping it's going to take me another 15 or 30 seconds. <laughs> Let me start off and thank, and thank you for placing me next to Michael Mark. I appreciate my Steve Peters Union, and I think the building trades and the construction workers all agree. We appreciate Shell coming into this area and taking the financial investment. So, Michael, thank you for you and your company investing your money into Western Pennsylvania and Beaver County. It's a big job. Thank you. middle class workers and jobs for, for the future and for our sons and daughters and we, we so do appreciate it. But you want to know what a steam fitter is. John always says, Ken, what's a steam fitter? Steam fitters do heating, air conditioning, refrigeration, process pipe work. And I'm talking heating and air conditioning. Every building's got heating and air conditioning anymore. So we install them in the hospitals and the schools, the offices, the medical centers, any building with heating and air conditioning, we install the heating and air conditioning. Refrigeration. We all need refrigeration in cafeterias, in, in restaurants, in schools, in various supermarkets, targets, dinegals, we install refrigeration. But not only do we install them, 40% of our man hours come from the installation, but 30% come from fixing the problems. When you have your heater go down, you know how important it is in, in a cold winter day in Pittsburgh, or when you have no air conditioning in the summer, we have guys that ride in vans by themselves and take laptop computers out and multimeters and fix the problem. So we're doing service work as well as installation, but we also do 30% of our work 
in industrial type work, process by the crack processing plants, steel mill, chemical plants, the, uh, the shipments for Mansfield, all those things we do process by part. What does it mean? John said, what's it mean for the state bidders for the crack? We got 1,800 active members. When this job peaks, there'll be 1,500 state bidders on the job. We're almost going to double the amount of members we're going to need during the peak time of the crack. That's what this means in the state bidders. Thank you, John. You saw me coming to you. <laughs> Teddy has me believing that life wouldn't exist without a steam fitter. I should be wearing one of those buttons. I love your steam fitter. <laughs> Michael Marr from Shell. Michael, welcome. I've actually been on the team for about five and a half years, but working primarily from Houston, Texas, traveling up periodically to, uh, to engage and represent Shell. Uh, I will be moving here this summer, very much looking forward to it. Uh, family and I will move up uh, at some point you know, when the schools are out and uh, we'll be relocating to this area. So looking forward to coming up to Western Pennsylvania as well. Um, I'm going to flip this over on you, Jenna, a little bit, because I have the microphone right now. We go. Uh, and I'm going to talk about how important Beaver County is to Shell. Um, so, you know, this is one of, if not the biggest, one of Shell's biggest projects in the world right now. Uh, and that's you know, humbling to think about, and it's a challenge to think about. But not only is it a, is it a big project, we're entering a new business for Shell. Uh, we, we don't have exposure to the polyethylene plastics business. Um, so it's, that, that's another challenge for us. Also, we're doing it differently than our competitors who, I think as most people in this room know, uh, in the U.S. are by and large building these facilities down uh, on the Gulf Coast. Texas, Louisiana, there's eight or nine similar scale projects from our competitors. So we've got a, a lot on our plate and we've had to rely on a lot of good people from Western Pennsylvania. Um, first, we had to, uh, to validate that, that there would be a workforce to build the plant. And we got some really good help from our friends at the Pittsburgh Regional Alliance. And now we're building the plant. Ken, I got to thank you for doing the favor for all the good work you and your folks are doing out here. And really, all the building trades up, up here, um, I, I could say that about. We need them to help us get, get this plant built, and they're doing a great job. Then, looking ahead, um, yeah. <laughs> The shell's workforce needs after we have the plant built. Um, you know, that's a lot of my time. I, I, I do trying to uh, create the, the right awareness and, um, and vision for the, the jobs that will be here locally. And we've got some good partners in CCBC, Community College of Beaver County, who are here with us tonight helping us uh, do that. And really looking forward to uh, seeing this plant continue to fall out of the ground and get built and get to know some of the people who are going to be coming to work for us uh, on site as we hire them on. Great, thank you. I think, uh, thank you, Michael. I should point out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think it's terrific that Michael's moving up this area. We're going to see a lot of him, I think, both in the community and certainly on television in the years to come. So welcome again to this community. It's great to have you here. Thank you. And not last, but least, or any of that stuff, because this guy's been around, and I think I can spell his name without looking at it. I know I now can pronounce it. Rick Okrashevsky from The Carpenters. Go ahead, Rick. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And uh, once I get my name out, Rick Okrashevsky, and I say I'm from the Keystone Mountain Lakes Carpenters, my time is off. <laughs> But, uh, but at the end of the day, we, we really want to thank Shell. I want to ditto with what Ken had said, and I think the whole panel will go the same way. Uh, and coming up and providing opportunity for us to help provide opportunity. You know, the Keystone Mountain Lakes Carpenters is, is a large organization. We encompass five states in this region. Um, right now, we house close to 1,500 apprentices at our, our apprenticeship center on the parkway. And uh, we're hoping to help as much as we can in the Beaver County area to provide family sustainable jobs. So that not only once the plant is accomplished and completed, everything thereafter is able to have the workforce to build it, to supply 
the, the, the necessary employment for anything that we needed on the Donegal side after the plant's completed. So we're hoping to do that for the Beaver County residents and the, and the local area region. And uh, we're proud to be here. And thank you very much. Thank you. a whole applause from now on. It was appropriate to apply to our panelists, and I appreciate that. But I want to see if we can move along a little bit. And again, I told the panel if they want to react to something that somebody says, just give me a little hand signal and we'll go from there. I want to start with sort of a basic proposition. And, and Pat, I'm going to start with you because you said this to me the other day. And that is that we've got a shortage of people for the projects that are going on, not just Shell, but hospitals, and any other kinds of building that's going on. The developer would know this. Describe, what is the problem here? What's going on? Well, I think what we have, uh, and you know, Kenny just uh, mentioned it earlier. earlier. I'm sorry, Kenny just mentioned it earlier. Uh, the training that has been necessary to bring the, the, the uh, labor force up to where we needed to be with the Shell plant and everything else that is going on out here. And I think the trades are doing a great job of, of providing those to that training. But I know we have a long, long way to go. I think every one of these guys would tell you that. Uh, we need, and I think it's a great opportunity for the young people of this county and in this region, not just the county. I mean, these are good paying jobs. These are, you know, these kids can come out of there and after a training of so many weeks, whatever they may be, they can come on and become a, uh, you know, apprentice, go on to a journeyman, and make a great living for a long time. Where are you seeing the shortages? Well, I think we're seeing the shortages in carpentry, in uh, 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 masonry, uh, HVAC to some extent, uh, although I know Ken has a great training center out in Cranberry. I uh, should have been on Ken, but that's okay. <laughs> 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 and uh, so I think those are the things that we're seeing, and those are the things I think that are going to come to fruition very shortly. I think by this time next year, I think you're going to have a better labor force. I think you're going to have more to choose from. And those labor folks will have more to choose from as well. Well, let me ask some of the, uh, the labor folks, because I've been really impressed with some of the training programs that are going on in uh, this region and opportunities for folks to help meet the needs, not just in chill, as I say, but in any other kinds of developments that are going on. So would, would one of you guys want to tell us, this? but Carpet, you can't miss their training building, right? When you come out Parkway West, it's that big mansion-like building off to the side. What's going on there, Rick? It's, it, it's good things. Uh, you, you know, to provide this kind of training for young people and, and even people that have been in the trades for a long time, that have um, moved on to become journey person carpenters with us. It's, it's a wonderful thing. You know, in the 41 years I've been a carpenter, um, I've seen these times ebb and flow quite often. You, you know, we've had, where are you gonna be able to supply the workforce? Are you gonna be able to get it done? Are you gonna be able to have enough people? And we've always been able to step up to the plate, uh, not only the carpenters, but all the building trades, and be able to provide the necessary workforce in order to accomplish these projects. And we feel that we have the mechanisms in play. You know, listening to Pat is talking about, you know, the things and, and watching him from the development side, you know, and thinking about the workforce. We, these mechanisms are there. And all we have to do is use them and utilize them to the fullest potential. And we will we will have that workforce to build these projects. Kenny, you mentioned that we really have to double. We have to double the, the number of folks in your, you know, seed fetters in order to meet the needs given what Shell needs. You're exactly right, John. How are you doing? You're exactly right. And I know that uh, what Pat's concerns are, but the building trades has been training apprentices and bringing people in. Journeymen teach the apprentices, and we have schools that are all for free. But the last 50, 60 years have been in existence for the last 100 years. And right now, with all the work that's going on, we look at the future and start bringing in three or four times more the amount of apprentices than we used to bring in. The Shell Cracker site, they would like to see 20% ratio of apprentices, and we're going to meet those goals as best as we can. My union, the Steam Fitters, is bringing in four times more the amount of apprentices that we used to do, and all the training is for free. So I see the Wait, concern. all the training is free? Well, all the training is for free, and what the building trades locals do, 
and how they fund it, we're self-funded, we're independent. Roughly a dollar an hour off of everybody working goes into a joint apprentice training fund, which is labor and management. And in that fund, we pay for our instructors, pay for the books, the pencils, the papers, everything for all the apprentices where the training is for free. Unlike a university, a tech school, a community college, all this training is for free. And they start at roughly 15 to 17 to 18 dollars an hour with full health coverage. And keep in mind- Wait a minute, you're paying them and you're providing health care while they're, 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 they're learning. While, well, they go to school, all the trade you go to school at night or during the day, and they work and learn a trade during the day too. So they're being paid when they're working on construction sites because they're good labor and they're young, strong backs that help us lower our costs, and we train them. Michael, what do you think of that? Well, I, so I, I've actually been out to board their training facility, and that's why I asked to speak. It's, it's a phenomenal facility. Uh, I'll let Ken speak to the different aspects of it, but uh, really, it, it's a place where you can get a wonderful free education with lots of exposure to all the different things Team Fitters do. Yeah. And John, uh, the next question will Beaver County, how does it affect that? We are recruiting and looking for people from Beaver County. Our organizer, Nikki Kappas, has a relationship with the community colleges, the tech schools, and our whole 15 counties. But in Beaver County, we want people to know when our test is, know what to do to try to get into our program. People that got skills like welding and HVAC in tech schools or community colleges, they are more valuable to us than somebody with a college degree in finance. We're looking for determined, motivated, hardworking people that can make money for contractors. So don't be scared of a labor shortage. We're going to bring more people in than we ever have. And we don't want to abandon the commercial work, whether it's industrial, commercial, hospital, schools. We're going to ban all this work. We built two, two stadiums at the same time, nuclear power plant, Mansfield, Western Pennsylvania, and Beaver County. Got some of the best work ethic in the country. So we're going to man this stuff, hardworking people in the Now, but the last thing I want to do is to be up on one of those high high beams. I mean, I, I admire, these guys are amazing. Uh, when you see them out working up, way up high, what, 20 stories, 40 stories? 40, 40, You've done that yourself. 1,200 feet. That's unbelievable. Uh, so, if you're not so I'm not, I'm not a candidate. I'm not a candidate for your uh, your job. But suppose somebody in this room wanted to become an iron worker. First off, uh, ditto what uh, Ricky O and Kenny said. All of our apprenticeship, our training is very similar. Uh, Local 3 <clears throat> stepped up and we started a future jobs training program. We can't recruit apprentices if we don't have nowhere to send them, to put them to work. So what we did, we're bringing the guys into the apprenticeship, sort of the future jobs training program, where they're going to school two nights a week, and if they have a current job, they're able to keep that job and work through that day <clears throat> while always learning our apprenticeship. It's the same school, just a little slower pace, and as soon as we get the work availability, we can move them right over into our regular training program and put them out to work. And that's the bottom line. I know the, I'm sure these three unions think they're the greatest, but the fact is that they can't get to work until your operating engineers have cleared the dirt and made the, made the way, uh, right? Well, or in the case of the iron worker, we have to pick it up and put it in place, and then he puts the bolts <laughs> Is Beaver County a source of good labor for operating engineers? It actually is, and as I indicated, I'm the first business manager that was a graduate apprentice in our local, and I got into the apprenticeship in 1976, and I actually spent my apprenticeship in Beaver Valley in places like Bruce Mansfield and JNL Steel and Donna Crucible in Midland, and this is where I learned to be an operating engineer. Uh, we recruit heavily from all the various areas, and, and we train, it's in New Alexandria, but it's for, it's for the areas. Um, we spent, and every craft you see up here, plus the other building trades crafts, have spent significant dollars, and as was pointed out, this is labor, workers, and employees dollars 
and jointly administered and ran by both labor and management. And we have partnerships with our employers. We represent 650 employers. It's a partnership when it comes to training. We invested in 2012 $8.1 million in putting a new facility in Westmoreland County for that training. And we probably spend, we spend about $4 million a year in training and uh, probably two or $300,000 a year in, in the acquisition of new equipment. One thing I want to point out that we do, we've talked about apprenticeship, but it's equally important for all of us is that we take those members, again, many of whom in my local live in the, in the valley here, we provide continuing education. So technology changes. When I became an operating engineer, equipment was a lot more simple, mechanical drives. Now operating engineers, when they sit in a crane, they have to know how to con to program a computer in order to make a pick to even get the machine to run. If you're in an excavator or a dozer, you're working off a GPS, you've got screens in your cab that are telling you what the depth is or the toe of the slope or the grade that you have to work on. So you have to be very technically educated in order to do that work. And the same can be said for any other craft sitting up here. I would point out another example, a plumber who isn't here, they actually have a hospital room in their training facility to simulate the special needs of doing plumbing work in a hospital in order to train their members. So we're all investing in that. Great, great. Thank you, thank you very much, John. Let me, uh, I'm gonna to turn to Jack Manning because I don't, I wanna throw a little cold water on this. I mean, let's be real. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Beaver County's not alone in this, but in 1970, there were 208,000 residents in Beaver County. Today, you're down 40,000 to 168,000. What's the strategy from a Chamber of Commerce perspective? What's the strategy to grow Beaver County to reverse that trend? And by the way, that trend is in every single county in southwestern Pennsylvania. It's not unique to Beaver County. But this is a county that's trying to think ahead so what's the strategy, Jack? Well, it is. The Chamber of the Partnership, we do have a strategy. We, we realize uh, we just don't need the jobs. We need the families behind those jobs to move into Beaver County. If we don't start growing Beaver County population, and it's just not work here. Um, you know, I was born and raised here 18 years ago. Bill McKellen brought me up here. I worked in that industry. I was a fire manager. I understand the gap in the, the trade skills. But I can tell you from a Chamber standpoint, every single one of our members is looking and searching for qualified, skilled workers to run, whether it's their restaurants, <laughs> their social service, their nonprofits, and everything else. So we, we, we have a people deficit that we're facing, we need to grow. And our strategy at the Chamber of the Partnership is, is really a five-point strategy of A, we want the jobs, but we want the diverse set of jobs and trying to track the families behind those. And we're referring to people like the PRA, Patty Hort, who does a great job recruiting people in and some other entities that do a lot of that develop the work to bring the jobs in. But once the jobs are here, in order to attract the families, there are several key things that we think uh, are fundamental to attracting and retaining young families and young people in the area. First and foremost is quality education, our K-12 system, our private schools, and our workforce development through the higher education folks, Bridges and Pathways partnership that's just been formed between Robert Morris, Geneva, Penn State, Beaver, and CCBC doing an outstanding job, that quality education. I know when I relocated a couple of times, first thing my wife did was, where are we gonna move? Because what school is like? Where yeah. are gonna go to? And so the key is, how do the school districts in Beaver County stack up against those in surrounding counties where folks can choose to live and just work in Beaver County, right? Uh, and, and it's mixed back. Certainly, if you're in the Orange County family, you look at Lincoln Park or PA Cyber, uh, Lima Park, 775 students from 81 different school districts, seven different counties. It's clearly a center of excellence if your kids into media production, entertainment, and arts, that's where you're going. Our public school needs to work. We have a lot of schools, several small school districts, uh, less than 1,000 enrollment. Uh, I don't know how we get uh, over the hump on that. We had one great voluntary merger. Uh, a few years ago between uh, Manac and Center, the four in Central Valley, worked out well for both those communities. But we do have a group, we have a quality education council that has uh, several superintendents, workforce providers, JA, different folks in there. 
And we're doing a feasibility study to bring data back to the public so that they can assess for themselves what looks like the best long-term uh, prospect for millage and taxes, and is there a better model to come up with? But the public education is, is important, but desirable housing uh, is important. We, people need to have those. Um, we, we need to make sure that we have good, effective local municipal government that's welcoming the people uh, and, and not interfering uh, and has good planned growth. And then uh, quality of place, quality of life amenities. There's a whole bunch of things that need to be there. When you put those things together, I think we're going to attract and retain a lot more people in the community. I'm going to repeat those five.